For many photographers, there comes a point where you think about opening your own studio. It's a daunting step forwards and one that requires careful consideration. I reached that point 25 years ago, and over the years I gradually grew to where I am today. If you're thinking about opening your own studio, there are a few important things to consider. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Use coupon code CARL to get a 10% discount. Before making the commitment of buying or leasing your own studio, you need to think about the value it will add to your business. How much use will you make of it? How often will you use your studio? Do you have enough business coming in to warrant the additional expenses? If you're unsure whether you'll be able to afford your own studio, you might want to consider sharing or renting it out as this will help spread the costs. With my own studio, we often rent the space per day for filming projects or as a venue for events, which has generated an extra source of income which helps subsidise our annual rent. Can you make your studio work for you and will you make the most of it or will it be sitting idle for half of the year? Location. It's important you find a location that works not only for you, but for potential clients as well. Does the studio have off street or nearby parking that you and your clients can use? Another thing to consider, especially if you shoot larger products, is accessibility. How easily can you get items into the studio? Working on the fourth floor won't be ideal if you're planning on being a car photographer. Space. When it comes to the right space, bigger isn't necessarily better, especially when it comes to paying for it. It's important to find the right balance between size and cost. Think about whether the studio is big enough to fit all your kit, what storage space is available, and whether you can comfortably work in that space. The primary consideration is what is your target market and what space does that require? If you frequently meet with clients, you might want to consider whether the space offers an area for a meeting room and what facilities such as bathrooms or kitchens it offers. If you seldom have the client with you while you shoot, these may not be a priority for you. If your focus is fashion and beauty, do you have adequate space for makeup and changing areas? All of these will convey a greater degree of professionalism rather than some temporary polyboards for your model to change behind. Having your own studio, buying versus renting. As a photographer, you don't usually start out with a 3,000 square foot studio. My first studio all those years ago was about 200 square feet. I'm now on my fifth studio and I've slowly built that up over the years to where I am today. So why does this work for me? Well, realistically, I don't need all this space. 1,500 square foot of shooting space would be more than adequate for most of my commercial work. But investing in this larger space allowed for the growth of our photography training business and expansion into video work and automotive photography it has also meant we've been able to hold live talk shows and workshops as well as film more content for our education website. Together, this has made the additional space an asset rather than just a luxury. I found my current studio whilst it was still in the construction phase, which meant I also had the opportunity to make my own requests and changes. That's another plus to owning your own studio. You can change it as you like. One of the features we've installed in ours is an infinity cove or cyclorama, which many of our members will be familiar with having watched our courses. If you'd like to know how we built it, I'll post a link to another video we have on creating your own infinity cove. Further advantages of owning your own studio include having your own space and equipment at hand should you want to experiment and expand your skills or work on images for your portfolio. A well-located studio will also allow for increased exposure and the amount of foot traffic that you receive. While having a large space has its pros, it also has its cons too. From a business perspective, a larger studio usually works out better value money per square foot, but it is more expensive overall because the larger space means the total annual rent is much higher. 
Having to pay overheads such as maintenance, insurance and even heating also increase with a bigger space. Staff salaries mean your expenses will be higher and it's important you factor these costs into your calculations when determining your budget for a studio. Also remember that the final fit out costs for your studio can be very high. For example, the construction of your cove, storage areas, heating, office space, networks, furniture, etc. meant that our initial investment was hundreds of thousands of dollars and that was without any photography equipment. More information on how to determine your business costs can be found in our business section on Carl Taylor Education, along with other useful information such as pricing, marketing and other important business skills. Investing in your own studio is a huge financial commitment, so it's important to determine what you can afford to spend each month. If you find the revenue generated from your work is not much higher than your expenditure, it might be worth considering other options. So what are these options? Well, if you're determined to own your own studio, you might want to consider having a smaller studio and renting larger ones on a daily basis when needed. I know a number of very successful photographers who do this, including product and liquid photographer Barry Macario and liquid specialist David Lund, both of whom have featured on our live talk shows. This is often a more financially viable option that offers the best of both worlds. They use their small studio for tests and pre-shoots and then use a larger rental one for the main project. Rental Studios Short-term rental studios offer much greater financial freedom as it allows you to rent according to your budget. You can minimize costs by renting as and when you need. It allows you greater flexibility too. You can rent for a half day or more and only rent the space you need. A rental studio also means you can work from anywhere in the world. Most major cities such as New York, London, Paris, Shanghai or Barcelona all have rental studios, many of which are linked to equipment rental houses too and often offer a number of different studios that you can choose from. I'll run through some of the choices, large and small, which suit different budgets. In the UK and London, I've worked at some of the following studios in the past. The Works. This is one of London's leading studio facilities, with 30,000 square foot of space spread over eight or nine studios. Park Village Studios is a great building consisting of a main single space of around 2,700 square foot with a great J-shaped infinity cove, plus they have two other smaller studios. Spring Studios, another London operation with a variety of contemporary industrial spaces with lots of light available if needed. Junction 11, a base close to Oxford with large studio spaces and fully equipped and even suitable for automotive photography. In New York, Spring Studios also have a presence with excellent facilities. And others worth a mention are Sandbox in Lower Manhattan, and great facilities can also be found at Light Space Studios in Brooklyn. Some great space with excellent natural light can also be found at Canoe Studios with a variety of spaces spread over two locations. In Paris, I've worked at Pinup Studios where they have a choice of eight indoor spaces and three rooftop areas. Great staff and a friendly atmosphere, they're based in the 14th arrondissement. And also worth a mention are the Studio Moderne, not far from Place de la Bastille. Prices for rental studios can vary quite dramatically, but are sometimes negotiable, especially if booking for several days. Most of the ones I've just listed will charge approximately £1,000 per day for 2,000 to 3,000 square feet. And that's without equipment. Now these costs are obviously added to your client's invoice. If you're on a much tighter budget, more recently there have been many independent smaller studios offering rental at lower rates. These are often photographers who have their own studios and are using them to earn extra revenue or they might be less expensive because they are smaller or not so conveniently located. 
A couple worth a mention in London are Yo-Yo Studios, owned and run by fashion and portrait photographer David Yo, 69 Drop Studio, and MS Photo Studios, who list their competitive rates on their website. There are plenty to choose from. You can even find monthly rentals if you need to build your portfolio, for example, or have a longer project. Capital Studios are one of those offering monthly rentals in London, but I'm sure a quick Google search and you'll find similar in most major cities. Do remember, though, that studio space is just that space. It doesn't come with equipment. If you're looking for specialized lighting equipment, many of the larger studios have equipment rental partners, or if not, they will be able to recommend equipment rental companies. These companies will deliver the items you need to the studio of your choice. Here's some popular equipment rental houses in London, New York, and Paris. In London, the Pro Center, Direct Digital, and the Flash Center. In New York, Focus Gear, Photo Care, and Adorama Rentals. And in Paris, Direct Digital, and Photo Cine Rent. And it's worth mentioning that Direct Digital also have a range of associated studios and equipment rentals in several major cities. So what will work for you? When it comes to owning or renting a photography studio, only you can decide which option will work for you. The points above should provide a guide and help you weigh up the positives and negatives of each. Having your own studio is a business risk and a major commitment. Before you go down this route, you have to be confident that you will be able to make a success of it. And I'd always recommend hiring a studio for a day to get the feel of what a large space can do for you, or at least help you decide what space you need. If you're planning on starting out with your own small studio, then I have another video on our channel about how to work in a small studio space, where I offer advice on controlling light, storage, and the working area, but if you want the very best information that I can provide, then you will find that on my platform on Carl Taylor Education. I hope you found this useful. Give us a thumbs up if you did, and thanks for watching. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash Carl to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.